Welcome to Katia V5 Part Design Workbench Getting Started Tutorial. Before getting into the detailed instructions for using parts, the following tutorial aims at giving you a feel as to what you can do with the product. It provides a step-by-step -step scenario showing you how to use key functionalities. The main tasks described in this section are Entering the Part Design Workbench Creating a pad Drafting a face. Filleting an edge. Editing the pad. Mirroring the part. Sketching a circle from a face. Creating a pocket. Shelling the part. Entering the part design workbench. This task shows you how to enter the part design workbench. Select File. New. Or click the new icon. The new dialog box is displayed, allowing you to choose the type of document you need. Select part in the list of types field. Click OK. The new part dialog appears. By default, the enable hybrid design option is on. Meaning that you are allowed to insert wireframe and surface elements in bodies. To facilitate your design, we recommend you never change this option during your session. Click OK to validate your preferences and close the new part dialog box. The part design workbench is loaded. And, an empty cat part document opens. If the new part dialog box does not appear, the part design workbench is immediately loaded and an empty cat part document opens. The commands for creating and editing features are available in the workbench toolbar. Now, let's perform the following task. Creating a pad. Creating a pad. This task shows you how to create a pad, that is extrude a profile sketched in the sketch a workbench. Open the getting started .cat part document to open the required profile. Please refer to the link given in the description. Your profile belongs to sketch 1. And was created on plane XY. It looks like this. Select the profile if not already selected. And click pad. The pad definition dialog box appears. Default options allow you to create a basic pad. As you prefer to create a larger pad, enter 60mm in the length field. The application previews the pad to be created. Click OK. The pad is created. The extrusion is performed in a direction which is normal to the sketch plane. The application displays this creation in the specification tree. Drafting a face. This task shows you how to draft a face. Click Draft Angle. The Draft Definition dialog box appears. The application displays the default pulling direction on the part. Select the face as shown as the face to be drafted. The application detects all the faces to be drafted. The selected face is now in dark red whereas the other faces are in a lighter red. Click the selection field of the neutral element frame. And select the upper face. The neutral element is now displayed in blue and the neutral curve is in pink. Enter 9 degrees in the Angle field. Click OK. The part is drafted. Filleting an edge. This task shows you how to use one of the fillet commands designed to fillet edges. Click Edge Fillet. The Edge Fillet Definition dialog box appears. It contains default values. Select the edge as shown, to be filleted, that is, to be rounded. The list of elements icon now available. You can edit the list of the objects to be filleted.
clicking preview lets you see what the default fillet would look like. Enter 7 mm as the new radius value. And click OK. Here is your part. Editing the pad. You may like to make the pad thicker. This task shows you how to edit the pad and how to color the part. Double click pad 1. You can do it in the specification tree if you wish. In the pad definition dialog box that appears enter 90 mm as the new length value. Click OK. The part is modified accordingly. Now select part body. Select edit. Properties. And click the graphic tab to change the color of your part. Set the color of your choice in the color combo box and click OK. The part now looks like this. Mirroring the part. This task shows you how to duplicate the part using the mirror functionality. Select the reference face you need to duplicate the part. Select the face as shown. Click Mirror. The name of this face appears in the Mirroring Element field. Click OK. The part is mirrored and the specification tree indicates this operation. Sketching a circle from a face. In this task you'll learn how to sketch a circle on an existing face. Select the upper face to define the working plane. Click Sketch to enter the Sketch a Workbench. Once in the Sketch a Workbench, click Circle to create a basic circle. Click the circle center in the middle of the face. And drag the cursor to sketch the circle. Click once you are satisfied with the size of the circle. Click Exit Workbench to return to the 3D world. This is your part. Creating a Pocket In this task you'll learn a method to create a pocket using the profile you have just created. Select the circle you have just sketched if it is not already selected. Click the Pocket icon. The Pocket Definition dialog box is displayed and the application previews the pocket with default parameters. Set the Up to Last option to define the limit of your pocket. The application will limit the pocket onto the last possible face, that is the pad bottom. Click OK. This is your pocket. Shelling the part. Towards the end of the scenario, you'll learn how to shell the part. Select the bottom face of the part. Click the shell icon. The selected face turns purple and the shell definition dialog box appears. Enter 5 mm as the inner thickness value. Click OK to shell the part. You have defined a positive value, which means that you are going to obtain a thin part thickness. Congratulations, you have finished the scenario. I hope you had a good time. It is time for you to get into details. And don't forget to subscribe.